Peace and welcome to our five minute review series, where we waste no time and let you know what we think. Today, we have Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. A game that was brought to life on Kickstarter with almost 65,000 backers that pledged around $5.5 million. I can gladly say I was one of those backers. You can find me in the credits. You can also find Uncanny X member Kratos. This is an action adventure platformer in the style of a Metroidvania, a side scrolling 2.5D game created by Koji Igarashi of Castlevania fame. And there are plenty of similarities in the two, from weapons to enemies to the fact that Michiru Yamane is one of the composers. And I must mention, the music is incredible. She did not disappoint. Here is a snippet of my favorite track in the game. The map in this game is Iga's biggest to date. He and the devs went out of their way to make it their biggest. You can find all sorts of different terrains and environments. Desert, water, fire, and many more make an appearance. The controls are top notch. I feel I have full control and any time I died, I never felt the controls were to blame. I was just learning the game or perhaps just made a mistake. Either way, I never felt cheated. If a game has bad controls and I feel cheated because they are so bad, then I don't feel the need to play the game. The weapon you use, along with which shards you will choose, will drastically change the experience you have. The bigger and heavier weapons will slow your character's attack down, but then there are the quick and agile weapons, and these are the ones that I prefer. I like to stay as mobile as possible, I can sacrifice a little attack power for some speed and quickness. The shard you choose can vary from a simple ice spell to a fire spell, to many other things. I enjoyed going through the many different types of shards and finding exactly which combination I liked. The shards mechanics are reminiscent of Soma's tactical soul system which was originally featured in Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, as well as Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. The graphics won't blow you away. For example, this isn't Red Dead 2, and it's not even The Last of Us. With that being said, the graphics are gorgeous. There are plenty of colors, and all of the different spells make it pleasant to look at. The graphics are better than any Castlevania game I have seen so far. The funny part about that is, this is how I remember Symphony of the Night looking. But when you compare them, it's not even close. This is like a high-def version of Symphony of the Night. The Nintendo Switch version runs at 720p, the Xbox version at 900p, the PS4 version at a crisp and beautiful 1080p, and the PC can achieve 4K, but we prefer 1440p when it comes to PC because of better control latency. This isn't the longest game in the world, but if you do side quests and attempt to obtain trophies, you can get a lot more out of it. I have heard people taking anywhere from 20 to 25 hours just to beat story mode, not including side quests. The game is fun, I didn't want to set the controller down, but I felt the need to take a break so I don't beat it too quickly and enjoy the game longer. I paid for it about four years ago, so I don't want to beat it in just a few days after waiting so long. I'm taking it slow and savoring it. Keep in mind this review is still a little bit early, as Iga has a lot planned for this game. The Kickstarter did so well that many of the extended goals were reached. Maybe I will come back in a year or so and review all of the extras in the game then. It's not an expensive game, I usually see it for around $30, and for that price, this game receives the ICC stamp of approval. I am ICC, thanks for watching, peace.